We last left off with Phil claiming victory to his viewers and telling them that he put an offer in on house number four in the Seattle area. All right, what's going on, everybody? Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome to the pre stream for Ask the King episode 42. During the pre stream for an episode of Ask the King, Phil announces that the offer on what would be known as the Wakando to detractors in the future was accepted. As the stream builds up, as it is, it is undoubtedly doing right now, or if you're watching this on YouTube, which I get the feeling a lot of people will be watching this on YouTube, because I've got huge news for everyone. Incredibly huge news. Uh, this is basically the official announcement. But, uh, yeah, uh, we have now officially come to terms on the purchase of a home near Seattle, Washington. Which means that there is an impending closure coming, and I will be moving to the Seattle, Washington area within the next couple of months. He explained how the timing was perfect due to the gaming drought that was coming up, and that by May 22nd, he would sign the paperwork to making the move to a location near Seattle that he didn't want disclosed due to his paranoia, all but official. Yeah, it happened that fast. And I'd rather have it happen that fast, because let's face it, right now, we're in a drought. We're in a gaming drought. There's not a lot going on. This is the time for me to be dealing with this stuff. Especially with a lot of downtime that's going to be coming up uh, in the next several months. I'd much rather move out and make a major move uh, to a new home during, say, the months of June, July, etc. And have those be my transitional months than have it hold off and the next thing you know here we are it's the hardcore gaming season there's a ton of games coming out at the end of the year and me trying to coordinate it then probably wouldn't work out too well okay so the bottom line is yes i have come to terms with the sellers on it was home number four if you watch the seattle trip vlogs that we did and the house hunting that we did it is house number four phil talked about the start of plans to pack but he was worried about his day one views for the new games coming up soon. Info, and the balls are rolling and everything is moving. So you might be saying to yourself, all right, so this is great news, but what does this mean for the next couple of months of content? What does this mean? How is this going to affect things? So I've been thinking in my head and looking at the schedule, and here's how it's going to affect it. Because I know a lot of people are going to, this is going to be the hot question. How are things going to change? When's Phil moving? Uh, basically... The closing process, we scheduled it out to take place over the next month. And ideally, we'd li the, like to close by, say, May 22nd, I think, is the day that we set in stone as the final day to close. Which means, on May 22nd, I will sign some documents and officially I will own a home near Seattle, Washington. Notice I keep saying near Seattle because I don't want to tell you guys exactly where it is, obviously. Um, once I own that home... It will now be time for me to plan my move. I was also extremely concerned about the move itself, and the realist guy on the internet voiced his concerns for his viewers. Oh, there you go. That's the big news for today. Uh, I talked about it on Twitter a little bit last night because I could again I couldn't fall asleep. I'm going to be honest with everyone. Yeah, it's it's it really is uh, on my mind. There is a, a worry involved in this move. Primarily, number one, because, yeah, I am moving across the country to an area that I've only been to once before, and I really enjoyed it, but it's a huge life-changing move. Number two, uh, I'm moving in with my girlfriend for the first time, which is going to be a different experience. Number three, financially. And, I, you know, I'm the, I, I've said this before. I'll say it again. I'm one of the realest people on the Internet. When I tell you guys about my life and I tell you about stuff that's going on, I talk about it honestly. And I'm going to be honest with everyone. I am not rich. The... The exaggerated, ridiculous stuff that I hear people saying about the kind of money that I make has been grossly exaggerated. I can't tell you what I make, but I can tell you there's no way that I make as much money as a lot of people seem to assume I do. And uh, it's going to be very tight for a while. Because keep in mind, once I move to Washington, now I still have this condo in Connecticut 
that I paid way too much money for back in 2009, chances are if I try to sell it, I'm probably not going to make a lot of money and I probably might not even make enough to pay off my mortgage, which is a huge concern. Imagine if I can't make as much selling this place as I still owe to the bank. Now I got to pay thousands of dollars out of my pocket to pay off the mortgage just to get rid of it. If I don't, let's say I choose not to sell it right away. Now I'm literally pissing away. I'd, I'd say probably 1500 or more dollars a month on a condo I'm not using and I can't rent out because I'm not in Connecticut. So there's big financial concerns that are kind of lingering, you know, in the back of my head. Words that aged like those forgotten leftovers in the back of Phil's fridge. Phil then talked about the future changes he has planned for his content. Most of them have been yet to be seen for the past six years, excluding the green screen test footage, which was just pointless. Because there is no way whatsoever that within 30 days of now, I will be able to that quickly, pl effectively plan a move across the country. It's just not going to happen. There's too much logistically. There's too much to think about. Uh, it's too much in a short period of time to plan out. And so what I'm going to do is take the, this next month to gradually start looking into things. What moving companies? What are the options for that kind of stuff? Maybe I'll start to pack up my, my uh, models and stuff one by one a couple a day until finally that stuff starts to accumulate and makes it easier to move, etc., etc. And uh, and then come May, then is when I will seriously you know contact these businesses, contact the internet companies out there and say, listen, I'm going to move in around this date. I need the internet working by then. I need a movie company to move my stuff on that date. And plan all that stuff out. So we're talking about basically a two-month process <clears throat> over which there's going to be a planning phase, a closing phase, and then an actual moving phase. So if all things go well, if all things considered go according to my plans, okay, I will be moving sometime in June, probably the middle of June, and uh, ideally, I would like to schedule it around E3 week. Unfortunately, it may end up being E3 week. And if it does end up being E3 week, what that means is that I'll, I'll be behind on all the E3 news. And once I finally get set up and everything's working, then maybe I can do my very first batch of, of, uh, of content from the new place will be me and my reactions to everything that happened to E3, which could be neat, right? So we'll see. This is just me completely talking out of my ass because I have no clue how things are really going to work. If anything, will 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 change. Um, it is what it is. I can't right now. It's very hard to see the future and see a full plan of how this is going to work, simply because you don't know how it's going to work. You're, you know, what if they find things that need to be fixed in the inspection? What if something happens? Here's the other thing: the second half of May into the first week of June, there's a ton of new content. A ton of new games, including, you know, Watch Dogs, which everyone's been waiting for for a hundred years. Uh, I know there's a uh, Mario Kart 8, <clears throat> and I believe there's one or two other big releases during that time frame that I cannot, you know, I can't miss those. I mean, yes, this is a big move. This is a life-changing event for me, but I also can't miss out on big releases that are my livelihood. You know what I mean? Right now we're in a drought. That's the time when I'm going to get a big boost of attention. And that's the time that I really will need to be working. So I need to work around that stuff. And that's where it's going to be really tricky. Working in this important life stuff around my work and gaming schedule. So that you guys still get the entertaining content. And you know, I still get the views that are going to pay for this move. During Ask the King that night, viewers asked Phil about his podcast with Rambo. Smart guys, the one about, you know, professional wrestling, Phil's favorite hobby. He said that him and John were going to go ahead and keep things together, content-wise. At least that was the plan for the time. Okay, what is going on, everybody? DSP here. Make sure my hat is in position. Yes, I remembered the hat this month. I know it's very important that I have it for Ask the King. <clears throat> this is episode 42. Wow, think, just think about that, doing it monthly, episode 42, I've been doing this for quite a long time, today is April 17th, 2014, it's the first time I'm doing Ask the King in two months, because I've been so busy 
with gameplay, especially last month, the month of March, was absolutely out of control. And uh, I'm back. I'm back. And it's a crazy month for me. I'm, I'm now amidst uh, planning a, a move that's going to be happening in the next two months. That's right. I'm moving out of Connecticut. I'm moving to uh, just outside of the Seattle area of Washington. If you want the full skinny on that, watch the pre-stream. I just did a pre-stream video uh, for Ask the King where I kind of explained the whole situation. I don't want to reiterate it because this is about your questions. It's not about me talking about myself unless you want to know about it, okay? And that's right. For the first time in almost a year, the return of paper. Ooh, the return of paper to Ask the King. I finally fixed my printer, and I'm able to answer the questions right off of a piece of paper for the first time in ages. So, <clears throat> without further ado, let's get started. And this week, or this week, this month, we've got two uh, questions that were kind of very common, meaning many people asked them. And I just wanted to clarify for everyone and answer these questions collectively at the beginning of the episode so that they're all clear and you know what to, the, the answers are to them, all right? So... Question number one was, Phil, now that you are going to be moving in the next couple of months, what is the future of Smart Guys? Smart Guys is myself and John Rambo's long running, I mean, we're talking, what was it, 2010 when we started that thing? Pro wrestling commentary show. And uh, just in fact, this Saturday, it's returning after a couple weeks hiatus to talk about WrestleMania and everything we think about what happened at WrestleMania and afterwards. Probably going to be a really big and popular one. Um, and people love the show. It's one of the few things that I do that isn't directly gaming related. It's something else that I like. And people really enjoy that show and want to know what's going to happen to it. Well, the bottom line is, first of all, I've already explained this, but I guess a lot of people didn't catch on. We already did a show, Smart Guys, where we weren't together. That's right. There was actually one month when John couldn't make it for the show. However, we were able to do it over Skype where I had, you know, his face here, my face here, and we did it that way. And the bottom line is since we're not together, we will have to do it that way. So from now on, Smart Guys will continue um, after this move, which is coming up in the next couple of months, but it will be a Skype-based show. It'll still be live streaming. It'll still be on YouTube. There'll be literally no change to you, the viewer, besides you're going to have to watch us talking over Skype via sitting on the same couch next to each other. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> so now for individual questions. And the first one today is going to be from someone named Crinks. And he asks the following. He says, Hey, Phil, I was recently following a 720-hour Pokemon XY Marathon on Twitch. Whew. The idea that I could tune in at any time and know the stream was live was such a cool thing. My question is, would you consider doing a streaming marathon? Nothing that crazy, but maybe a 24-hour marathon of a popular game or multiple games. I think this would be something cool and new for your channel. Perhaps you could do this with John as a big send-off for, for Couch Co-op. Um... Well, here's the thing. Typically, these guys that are doing marathons, okay? First of all, it's usually not one person. Not one person, I think, could play a game for 720 hours straight because you die of sleep deprivation. So it's obvious that this is what they were doing, that there were multiple people taking turns and such. And I think that's why Krinks kind of suggests something a little bit less ridiculous. Um, maybe what he's saying is, uh, okay, instead of, you know, do a 24-hour stream, okay, one-day stream. Then I could see that's a lot more realistic. Um, but at the same time, the question is, what would I play for 24 hours straight? You know what I mean? Um, and if I, if it was something like, oh, well, Phil, you're great at fighting games, so why don't you play Street Fighter for two hours, then Killer Instinct for two hours, then Injustice for two hours? I'll tell you why, because after about six hours, that's it. You know what I mean? After you play for that amount of time, you're done. You're dead. You're going to be tired as hell, and your competitive edge is going to be gone, and playing is going to be worthless. You're going to lose every match. Now, this guy may also makes a good suggestion. Why don't you do couch co-op with John? Well, okay. John, first of all, I don't think wants to play anything for 24 hours straight. You know what I mean? Maybe he would be here for uh, a, a shorter marathon. But what would we do? And this is kind of what I was saying with, with uh, this impending move. And a lot of people asking me, Phil, what's going to happen to the co-op that you do with John? The answer is, what was going to happen to the co-op I do with John anyway? Because the more you look at games these days... Couch co-op is very quickly going away. 
with the exception of games like the Lego games or anything that Nintendo puts out, pretty much anything else that's coming out is all online co-op now, where there is no cooperative two-player on the same TV anymore. It's all over the internet. So, hey, if there's a game in the future that John and I both want to play and want to do co-op, we could do it over the internet, but the couch co-op is going to eventually go away anyway. Um... Ideally, the people that do these crazy marathons are people who are doing it for a cause. I've seen a lot of people, oh, you know, 24 hours of this because it's for a charity event or something like that. Absolutely. And, you know, that is something that's cool that down the line, uh, I would very much, you know, particularly consider doing. But right now, as you guys know, in Connecticut, I've got inconsistent internet, right? Problems with the internet constantly. Uh, when I do this streaming, I also archive it and upload it. I have no ability right now to upload while I stream because it affects the, the stream negatively. It makes it choppy. Um, so right now, with the means that I have, I don't think it would be viable to work at all. I don't think it would work. But that doesn't mean that in the future, you know, after this potential move, once I get a new company of internet, once I upgrade my equipment, yada, 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 maybe this could be something that I do in the future. And in fact, I'll be honest with everyone. This is this is the God's honest truth. Uh, last year, about midway through the year, I was planning on doing some kind of a charity drive for charity, and I called it off. And the honest answer, and I know that you guys, some people, oh, oh, he's full of shit, whatever. I called it off because there was this huge negative movement towards me on YouTube. Phil addressed the move the next day while swaying in front of his large wall calendar for 14 minutes or so. Hello everybody, what is up? Dark Side Phil here, and welcome to a huge schedule update for 2014. Uh, it is, today is actually April 18th, Good Friday, yeah, that I'm filming this. And I've not done one of these since January, realizing this uh, yesterday, and I said, man, not only do I really need to update my schedule, but I need to inform everyone not only of the games that I'm playing but other upcoming events including that's right ladies and gentlemen I'm moving I am leaving Connecticut this wall calendar will no longer be on this wall we're gonna find a new place for it in my new place and uh, yeah so this will be not a thing of the past but it will be transitioned over to the new home okay want to give a preemptive warning I have a back injury for those of you who aren't familiar, and I will wobble back and forth, a lot of people say, oh no, it's like he's on a boat. Listen, I can't stand still. I can't. My back hurts. And if I use the tripod for this, it would never work because I'd have to pan and zoom everywhere and it would be a pain in the ass, okay? So, what I want you He told his viewers that were not suffering from motion sickness at the time, his plans to say goodbye to his friends, and when he was planning on his move, somewhere around mid-June. One. I'm closing on my home on the 22nd, my home in Washington, okay? Let me actually write this down, closing. If you want information, if you did, or weren't in the, the know about this, if you haven't seen anything about it, I made one video that was a summary when I got back from Seattle, my house hunting venture in Seattle in April. I made a big hour and a half video explaining the whole trip. And then this week, there was one pre-stream video where there's a huge announcement, me explaining that I got the place. Those are the two videos you're going to watch to get the, the skinny on this. But I'm closing on it on the 22nd. But as you can see with all the games coming out, I'm not going to be free to move until probably this week. Now, I'm obviously aware that UFC comes out that week. And a lot of people have asked me to check out UFC because it's going to be coming out on, the, on PS4 next gen. But I'm not going to be able to play it that week because more than likely that's the week I'm going to be moving from Connecticut to Seattle. Okay, so if that is the case, and I'm moving from Connecticut to Seattle, you won't see any new gameplay footage that week, but you'll see travel vlogs as soon as I get the internet set up at my new place. <laughs> Been in, in Connecticut all your life, over the course since of 2008 to now, you've done so many videos with so many people, including Howard, John Rambo, OJ, all the Street Fighter guys you used to hang out with, like Mayor McJustin, uh, you know, Drew, or, what are you going to do? And I'm thinking that there may be a great idea that one of these weekends, okay, one of these weekends in June, before I move, I do a huge kind of farewell to Connecticut party where I invite everyone over. We all just kind of shoot the shit, hang out, have food, have drinks, play games, 
and it could be you know a ton of different games it could be games that we've played over the years that we really enjoy kind of a reminiscing kind of thing um street fighter that's the other thing ultra street fighter 4 is supposed to come out in june but capcom because they're so fucking falling apart right now don't have a solid release date for it yet if it comes out in the first two weeks that's perfect i could have people over to play that game people would love to play that game but they never fucking announced it so i can't give a date to when it's coming out because they didn't do it okay if they do that's perfect if not maybe i'll have people over we'll play all their stuff but i think it's worth it to maybe do something special like that. In addition to that, some people have asked specifically that myself, Rambo, and Howard <clears throat> just kind of sit down and do some special, uh, like a, a, a stream slash vlog where we kind of shoot the shit and reminisce about the, you know, the time that we've spent in Connecticut together and all the projects and stuff that we've made possible by uh, helping each other out and stuff. And, uh, and maybe even reminiscing on the funniest moments or the, our favorite moments of stuff that we've done together. And maybe even have callers calling in and asking us questions. All right, that's a possibility. So all of that's possible in June. During Phil's monthly podcast, Hate Live, he once again talked about the gout wall of Renton and how important it was to him to keep safe from those evil trolls. Okay, what is up, everybody? Ooh, man, my hair is all screwed up today. Uh, DSP here. And welcome to Hate Live. It's the very first Hate Live in a month. Today is Thursday, April 24th, 2014. And I'm very happy to be here tonight with you all and to be able to do another episode of Hate Live. As you guys know, I love doing it. This is the show where I get to talk about all kinds of different things. This is a, going to be a jam-packed show. We've got a lot of information regarding what I've been up to recently with gameplay and what's coming up next week and for the next several weeks into May, which is going to be jam-packed with new releases finally, which is great. Uh, we've got a cumulative update regarding my impending move. That's right. After my house hunting efforts back uh, earlier this month, I have returned from the house hunting trip. We found a house we like, and I'm going to give you all the skinny on everything that we're doing. But what ended up happening was we saw a house that we really freaking liked. It has great amount of square footage, the right amount of room so that we could do what we wanted to do with them, an amazing bathroom, a huge kitchen, a back door area, and... It actually is a private gated community, which is a huge plus for us, being that we're both people who are public personas, we're on the internet, there are people out there who are, you know, will do stupid shit to troll, and when you're in a gated community, you immediately end all that. No one could get in, no one could get shit delivered to you that you didn't order, you know what I mean? No one could do any of those stupid things that people like to do in the event that someone got my address. Not that I would give it out, but hey, I didn't give out this address and people found it out too. So, he went on to talk about how much he was going to have to spend to move all of his shit and his plans on getting everything set up once moved in. In the meantime of all this happening, I'm thinking in my head and I'm thinking hard and I'm thinking, geez, the cost to move out there is going to be several thousand bucks. I'm going to have to furnish the place because it's not going to have things like a couch, a dining room table, chairs, uh, all the you know, bookcases slash dressers for all the rooms to put our clothes in. Uh, things for the bathroom, drapes for the windows, blinds for the windows. Because remember, I film and I can't film if there's all this bright sunlight constantly coming into the unit. So I'm going to have to do that. Uh, I, I, there's actually all kinds of stuff that needs to get done before we can officially be, say, we're moved in. What about just my office? I'm going to need somewhere to sit. I'm going to probably need another TV. I'm going to need this and that. And all this stuff's going through my head and I'm like... How am I going to pay for that because I have the money in savings, but I don't want to spend all the money immediately. If I spend all the money immediately and have zero dollars in savings, now what happens if something goes wrong, right? Now I'm screwed. <clears throat> so, Phil also chimed in about his credit. But what kind of credit do I have right now? And what I mean is not my credit score because my credit score is actually quite high, but what is my credit when it comes to... What can I actually pay with a credit card and or financing? And so I started looking and I, was, I opened my wallet earlier this week. I say, what is this? What is all this shit? And I realized that I have credit cards that I opened. I, sh I shit you not. In like the early 2000s that I've just auto renewed and I don't use them anymore. And there's no reason for me to have them because the interest rates went sky high in the mid 2000s. All these credit companies decided to raise all the interest rates on credit cards sky high during that whole banking crash. And since then, I haven't used credit cards. So I was looking at him and I was like, 
18 percent i'm not fucking paying that and i canceled that card 17 percent fuck that one of them was 22 percent do you have any idea how long it would ever take you to pay off the interest on a 22 percent credit card if you're paying minimum payments every month you probably wouldn't pay it off before you're dead okay so I'm looking around at all this, and I say, that's it. And I basically, I canceled all my old shit. I said, I don't need any of this. I'm starting fresh. I have a higher credit score now than I had back then anyway. And I was able to apply for a few new credit cards that now have pretty high limits and also have 0% interest for a year and a half. So I was like, this is perfect. Now, we moved to the new place. I can get the couch. I can get the, the furniture. I can get all the stuff from my office. I can get all the shit that we need up front and pay it off gradually with no interest for the next year and a half, which is the problem. I mean, I make money, but I don't make it all in one lump. I make it spread out. And so I need to spend all this money in one lump, but I can't pay it in one lump. And that's what this financing is going to enable me to do. And of course, a lot of these places, they're going to be saying, oh, we have our own financing as well. You know, year and a half, two years, no, no interest. So I'll try to take advantage of those kind of things too, if they propose themselves to me. <clears throat> now, the interesting thing about this though, is that here's the, here's where Having a financial background is going to help me versus what happens, unfortunately, with a lot of Americans. Phil tells us about his poor eyesight and then goes into a new setup tangent, followed up by a I need to sell the CT condo rant. So more than likely, it'll be around the middle of June where I'm going to be out of here. Okay, I'm going to be out. And there's actually a few things I need to do before... I get out of here, for example, I found out that in the state of Washington, uh, you need to get an eye exam every time that you get a new license. And obviously I'm gonna have to get a new license when I live there full time, but guess what? My doctors, my license, all the bullshit from when I was in high school, all right, says that I don't have good distance vision, it's true. All right now, I can read Everything I could see on my back wall of my condo, I could probably read most of the names on my DVD cases, I could read everything in my condo, but if I'm in like the, a classroom, and I'm at the back of the classroom, I can't read the blackboard. So how often are you driving, and you need to see immediately tiny text that's literally like hundreds of feet away from you? Never. The signs that you read when you're driving are huge letters, and I've driven my whole life on the highway, on side roads, never needed any kind of visual aid to do it properly, I'm, I'm good. But, technically it says on my driver's license, I need glasses to drive because the idiots who make the regulations think they know something. So even though I've never worn glasses my entire life, in order to get this visual exam done and pass it, I'm going to need to get glasses. All that needs to be done by the time that I finally move in the middle of June, and then, and then, after all that's done, and we're finally in Washington State, and we're buying the furnishings. I get my office set up. And please, Lord, I hope it works out. I hope I can get an internal capture card for this thing, which is what I want. So there's no audio delay. That I can do 60 frames per second streaming and recording. That possibly one day I could do the 1080p recording that I want to do. I can get a better graphics card for this thing that has dual monitor out. So that when I'm doing PC gaming, I have the dual monitor set up. And I can see what's actually going on. And once everything's in place, then guess what? Is it time to settle in? Is it time to get into a normal life schedule and work schedule? No, because guess what? Then I have to try to sell this place because this condo needs to go. I cannot afford permanently to be paying two mortgages. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford that. So I need to sell this condo, but I can't do it until I have all my shit out of here because I have nowhere to put it and there's no way they're going to be able to show pictures and show off this condo with all this shit in it. Look, you can't even see half... Well, you can't see because the camera's not there. You can't even see half the condo because there's so many boxes, so much clutter. All this shit needs to go before I can try to sell this place. And I'm gonna, I know there's going to be thousands of dollars that are probably going to go into repairs. There's holes in the walls. The piping is leaking. You know, there's shit. The fan just died. The ceiling fan in the, in the bathroom just died on me. There's no carbon monoxide detectors in here. There's a ton of stuff that's going to have to be done before I can try to sell it. So once you're done with one, on to the next. And it's just going to be like this all year for me. But I really am hoping by the end of this year, that number one, we could be in our new home and happy. So number two, I could sell this place, get it off my back, get it in the past. And number three, that we can finally have a relaxing time, a holiday, our first holidays together, me and my girlfriend. And uh, 
there's potential for greatness, but we need to get through a lot of work and stress now to get to that point of greatness. So I want to say thank you to those of you who see that I'm stressed out all the time. You know, I'm doing my best, but it is what it is. This is going to be like this until all this is over. And it, don't get me wrong, I'm stressed, but it's excited stress. It's I'm happy to be going through all this because I get a, I get a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I just need to get to the end of the rainbow first before I start celebrating. Okay? Huh. In the next part, we'll look into Phil's CT bucket list as he packs up and moves away from his hometown. Thank you for watching and stay safe out there.